Zeus up against the bearded lady. Very best of luck to both teams. Let's start the camp. CBBC's Bamzuki is a game show where creatures designed by the contestants themselves compete in cyberspace. It uses advanced BBC R&D virtual reality technology developed over many years to create its studio images. But it's still typical of a lot of studio programmes where there are many starts and stops and plenty of retakes. Each take needs carefully logging with comments on what happened so that the post-production is made easier. Bamzuki and BBC R&D have been looking together at ways of streamlining this process. Coming from a studio production background, I was increasingly frustrated by the fact that we seem to be repeating a lot of work. Um, you'd be in a gallery situation where a PA would be uh, writing down time code, which was then taken to an edit, and then an assistant would then come along, take that handwritten time code, type it back into a machine, and then that would then digitise the material for the edit. And I just thought this was ridiculous. Why on earth haven't we got a system which is more automated um, and we can cut out some of the cost and time and just streamline the whole sort of production pipeline? So R&D have come to the rescue in the gallery with a generic logging system, which could be used by many studio programmes. The PA uses a specially designed keypad to register the beginning and end of each take. Stop, stop, please. And is that a problem there? Do you see the hand? When it's over, the director decides whether or not it's good or bad, and the reason is typed in. A PC captures all the data. The idea is that this information should only need to be entered once, and time codes don't need to be written down. But because this is a prototype system, the PA also logs things the old way, on paper, just in case. And Joshua, you lost Zeke Sumo. What did if you a take is good, the system registers this so that it can be stored. Because here we come to the second part of the story. The studio is recording everything as usual onto a bank of DigiBeta machines. But in a second part of the project, R&D are capturing the three SDI video feeds onto a low-cost commodity PC. Its four 500 gigabyte drives record uncompressed video in full studio quality, and this is controlled by the logging system in the gallery. So whatever the DigiBeaters record, this system records as well. But, and this is the important point, this is tapeless production. When the recordings are over, the logging software automatically compiles a copy of all the good takes onto a DVD. This also contains details from the script and all the comments typed in by the PA. The idea is that this gives the director immediate access to all the material as he prepares a cutting order for the edit session. And the automatic logging of time codes for each take has other advantages for the production. Because that then saved a huge amount of time. It didn't require an assistant to come in the evenings and to have to spend hours uh, painstakingly tapping in uh, time code into the Avid and then digitising. Uh, what it meant was, it was that there was an ingest of, of the script that was produced in the office. Um, that was then coupled up with time code and that went straight into the Avid. And one of the really neat things from that was the fact that um, not only did we then ensure that all the right takes were taken at the right in and out times, but also it was all labelled correctly. So finding material was just a joy. Ian Trill is the director. Uh, I'm actually in the edit suite at the moment. Jerry's over there on the Avid editing away. And what we can quite often find is that we're not quite sure about something on the tape. And rather than stick the digi in, wind the digi back to the force to find that particular bit, while Jerry's busy editing away on other sequences, I can look on here, on the DVD, um, I can see if something's actually been digitised, because basically if it's on the DVD, it's been digitised. But also I can look at individual elements to that take to work out whether we're going to use that sequence or not. While Jerry's editing one programme, Ian can be preparing the cutting order for the next. So what I'm doing at the moment is I'm using the quad split off the DVD, just logging it the old-fashioned way onto paper. But what I'm finding most useful is the, just the speed that you can scroll through stuff. You can drag the, the timeline across the bottom and you're instantly there. If you compare it with trying to do that on a VHS in, in the old-fashioned way, that would just take forever. There's no spooling of tapes at all. Um, one other great feature of this is I hardly ever actually need to refer to paper notes um, taken from the script because on the left-hand side it gives you the item number itself. 
and then notes about that item number so it will tell you which tape it is that you're looking at. Notes that uh, we typed in in the studio, so on this, this one here it's good until Jake does something. And then if I cross-reference to the printout that's, that's been made from the log, um, I can see in this instance it, it was good until Jake entered and tripped on set. And then you can literally look at the, the main full screen, uh, the, the quad, which is what I tend to look at most of the time, or you can look at each of the ISOs full screens. So just clicking on the quad and you're straight through to the beginning of that take. But back to the online side of tapeless production. High quality video can now be brought in on a portable hard disk and copied over very quickly into the Avid. The file formats are those native to the machine and make use of open standards, in this case MXF. Well the whole process has enabled us to avoid the digitising process which essentially ties up a person digitising. Once it's captured, basically, it's, there's no difference at all. Now, this is a godsend for us because it saves time, it saves money, and it just makes it an incredibly efficient process by which we can, we, we know that whatever we recorded on the day is going to be straight in the Avid the moment we start recording. We made sure that we had a belt and braces scenario in terms of managing risk. We had a backup system whereby we had somebody on standby that we could call into digitised material as and when we needed it. However, the system was so effective that we were able to abandon that quite quickly. One thing that has become available, uh, which is available to all the production staff on the programme, is that all the clips have been uploaded onto the BBC intranet, and then by going to a specific website, you can actually click on each individual programme and look at a sequence online on any PC anywhere within the BBC. So if I click on sequence 17, we can look at the, these red takes here, which are takes one and three, the bad takes that we deemed weren't good enough to even bother to put into the Avid. The information is here. I can click on one of the links to it uh, and work out whether we actually need to consider digitising some of this material. The combination of a once-only data entry system, quick and easy reference to the recorded material and the advantages of a tapeless production system has really worked well for Bramzuki and now could do the same for other programmes. I think the way to measure this is in terms of the on-screen value. And it's clear that we did benefit, definitely, in terms of the, the, the amount of time that we were able to spend on actually making the programme look better, rather than having to worry about what we digitised and what we hadn't digitised off tape. And that's the key, because then you get a better product. And, I, and I'm convinced that part of the reason why Series 3 looks as good as it does is because of the fact that we were able to use this system. Now, go on!